All right. Good afternoon, students. Before we proceed to our topic this afternoon, let me first introduce myself. I am Ma'am Chin P. Puyot, and I'm going to be your TLE teacher. Since Delhi has a lot of specializations, I have decided to choose commercial cooking for our first quarter. Second quarter, we'll be going to household services. Third quarter, we're going to tackle handicrafts. And for the fourth quarter, we're going to discuss about the nail care. So are you ready? Of course, you're ready. So now let's begin with the first. And now for our first lesson is entitled Use and Maintain Kitchen Tools and Equipment. And at the end of this lesson, students will be able to utilize kitchen tools and equipment. Number two, maintain tools and equipment and working area. And of course, number three, store and stock kitchen tools and equipment. And now let's begin with utilize kitchen tools and equipment. Materials of kitchen utensils and equipment commonly found in the kitchen. Any cook should be familiar with the correct utensils, devices, and equipment in the kitchen. It is important to consider several things and not only the price when buying them. The job of cooking requires specific tools, utensils, and equipment for proper and efficient preparation of food. Each piece has been designed to accomplish a specific job in the kitchen. The tools, utensils, and equipment are made of different materials, each having certain advantages and disadvantages. The following lists are materials of kitchen tools and equipment commonly found in the kitchen. So, here it is. First, we have the aluminum. Or as, as you can see in the picture, these are the types of aluminum utensils in the, that we found in our kitchen. Aluminum is the best for all gr all around use. It is the most popular, lightweight, attractive, and less expensive. So, it is the most popular. Ito yung pinaka-common, madaling dalhin, attractive, and of course, yung mas mura kesa sa ibang materials na nakikita natin sa kitchen. It requires care to keep it shiny and clean. Of course, we're in our homes, we are using scotch bright, or do you know what it is? Um, steel wool, kung sa ating pang mga, sa, sina, sa, kung sa ating pang mga salita, steel wool. So, kailangan natin yung mga ganun pa, so we can keep them shiny. Much more, it gives even heat distribution no matter what heat temperature you have. It is available in a sheet or cast aluminum. Since it is a soft metal, the lighter gauges will dent and scratch easily, making the utensil unusable. Aluminum turns dark when you use with alkalis such as potato, potatoes, beets, carrots, and other vegetables. Acid vegetables like tomato, tomatoes will brighten it. Second, we have the stainless steel is the most popular material used for tools and equipment, but is more expensive, mas mahal. It is easier to clean, madaling linisin and shine, and it will not wear out as soon as aluminum at hindi madaling masira. Choose those with copper, aluminum, or aluminated steel bottoms to spread heat and keep the pot from getting heat dark spots. Stainless steel utensils may be bought in many gorges from light to heavy. So, meron ding meron yung magagaan hanggat sa mabibigat na mga stainless steels. Third is we have the glass. Is good for baking but not practical on top or surface cooking. Great care is needed to make sure for long shelf life. So, kaila, ito yung mga nakikita natin, glasses, yung madaling ma piak. They're very fragile. So, di sila, ma, di sila practical for cooking. They are just for baking. Next is we have the cast iron. Is sturdy. Matigas, but must be kept seasoned to avoid rust. So, nila sa alagaan para hindi sila kalawangin. Salad oil with no salt or shortening can be rubbed inside out and out and dry. Wash with soap, not detergent before using. So, bawal siya sa mga detergent. So, kailangan nyo talaga ang gabitin natin sa paglinis sa kanya is soap. 
Next is we have the ceramic and heat proof glass. It's used especially for baking dishes, casseroles, and measuring cups. Glass and ceramic conduct the heat slowly and evenly. Many of these baking dishes are decorated and can go from stove or oven to the dining table. So, sikat to ngayon eh. Ito yung tatawag na mga non-stick pan. Yung hindi na kailangan ng oil para mas healthy yung kinakain natin. Ito yung ginagamit nila na material. Ceramic and heat proof glass. Okay. You got it? You got it right. So, another is we have the Teflon. It's a special coating applied to the inside of some aluminum or steel pots and pans. As you can see in the picture, yan yung Teflon. It is easier to wash and clean, madaling dinisin, madaling hugasan. However, pero, take care not to scratch the Teflon coating with sharp instruments such as knife or fork. So, kailangan natin... Uh, mag-ingat na hindi ma-scratch yung teflon coating natin ng kuchilyo o di kaya ng tinidor. Instead, you should use wooden or plastic spatula to turn or mix food inside. So, kailangan yung gamitin natin is yung wooden or plastic spatula, yung kahoy na um, spatula or yung plastic para di masira yung teflon coating ng Pan. Okay. Next, of course, we have the plastic and hard rubber are used for cutting and chopping boards, tabletops, bowls, trays, garbage pails, and canisters. They are much less dull to knives than metal and more sanitary than wood. Mas marinis gamitin kaysa sa kahoy. Plastics are greatly durable and cheap but may not last long. So, sila yung durable Grabe yung quality, mura, pero di natin ma-sure na magtatagal sila. But of course, they are mas madaling gamitin kasi nga magaan sila. At saka, mas malinis tingnan. Tingnan nyo naman ang kulay. Ang cute, di ba? Kasi iba't ibang kulay. Okay. So, cooking utensils list that every kitchen needs. So, ito na yung mga list. Ano ba nga ba sila? Eh? Ano nga ba to? Diba? So, eto na. Alright, so we have the baster. It's handy for turning some of the meat or poultry juices from the pan back to the food. Basting brushes can be used for the same purpose but they're also convenient for buttering the tops of breads and baked goods after they come out of the oven. So, ito yung pampahid ng mga butters natin sa ating mga bread. We have the colanders, also called the vegetable strainer, are essential for various tasks from cleaning vegetables to straining pasta or tin contents. Natawag nito sa atin ay salaan. So, sabi ni mama, o asang salaan? Kuang salaan? But in English, it is called colanders. Okay, now you're learning something, right? Ito yung mga bagong word nyo, diba? So, kala nyo lang salaan, pero mas social ang tawag sa kanya, colanders. And of course, di mawawala, we have the cutting boards. A wooden or plastic board where meats and vegetables can be cut. So, sasabihin ni mama, asa ang tantaran kayo na ko'y tantaron. But in English, it is called cutting boards. And also, we have the dredgers, used to shake flour, salt, and pepper on meat, poultry, and fish. Ito yung mga lalagyan ng paminta. Kung sa atin pa ito, tinatawag natin itong pambudbud. Asang pambudbud diri kay mukhaon kong pachoy. But in English, it is called dredgers. Alright. Okay, next we have the double boiler, used when temperatures must be kept below boiling, such as for egg sauces, puddings, and to keep foods warm without cooking. So, as you can see in the picture, it is how double boiler used. And next we have the emery boards or sharpening steel, used to sharpen long knives. Hasaan. We have the flipper, 
used for turning hamburgers and other food items. Yan, yan yung flippers. Also, we have funnels used to fill jars made of various sizes of stainless steel, aluminum, or of plastic. And as you can see in the picture, it is a funnels made of plastic. Next, we have the garlic press. It is, is a kitchen tool which is specifically designed for the purpose of pulping garlic for cooking. Pero sa atin, yung ginagamit na natin is butilya sa coke. But, the social sila ginagamit na is garlic press. Yes. Next, we have the graters. Used to grate shred, slice, and separate foods such as carrots, cabbage, and cheese. And we have the handy poultry and roasting tools. Make it easier to lift our hot roasted turkey from the roaster to the serving platter without it falling apart. Kung gusto ka magsugba, we have the roasting tools. Next, we have the kitchen knives. Often referred to as cooks or chef's tools, knives are a mass for all types of kitchen tasks, from peeling an onion and slicing carrots to carving a roast or turkey. So, we have different knives. Each of these knives has specific uses and their names. We have the bread knife, we have the chef's knives, and as we go on to our lesson, we are going to encounter these different knives. Next, we have the kitchen shears. They are practical for opening food packages, cutting tape or string to package foods, or simply to remove labels or tags from items. Other cutting tools such as box cutters are just as handy, special, especially for opening packages. So, ginagamit siya sa kitchen, ha? Hindi siya ginagamit pantahe. Sa kitchen lang to siya, students. Okay? Next, we have the measuring cups and spoons. Measuring tools are among the most important items found in any kitchen since consistently good cooking depends upon accurate measurements. Measuring tools should be standardized. Measuring cups and spoons are also in the home kitchen. Scales are used to weigh materials of bigger volumes. These are delicate and precision instruments that must be handled carefully and are more dependable in terms of accuracy. Alright, so as you can see in the picture, they, ha they are... They have different sizes. You have there the one fourth cup, the one third cup, the one half cup, and so on and so forth. That is for measuring, of course. Commonly used measuring tools in the home or in commercial kitchens include the following. First, we have the measuring cup for dry ingredients. It's used to measure solid and dry ingredients such as flour, fat, and sugar. It is commonly made of aluminum or stainless material. Sizes range from 1, 1 1.5, 3 fourth, and 1 fourth. Nested cups to 1 gallon. There are cups made of plastic and come in different colors but could only be used for cold ingredients. They could, they could warp, causing inaccurate measure. Next, measuring cup for liquid ingredients. Commonly made up of heat-proof glass and transparent so that liquid can be seen. Quantity of measure of liquid ingredient is differ different in a dry measuring cup. Portion scales used to weigh serving portions from 1 ounce to 1 pound. Scoops or dippers used to measure serving of soft foods such as filling, cream, and mashed potato. Spoons come in a variety of sizes, shapes, materials, and colors. These are used to measure smaller quantities of ingredients called for in the recipe like 1 tablespoon of butter or 1 4 teaspoon of salt. Household scales are used to weigh large quantity of ingredients in kilos, commonly in rice, flour, sugar, legumes, or vegetables, and meat up to 25 pounds. Alright, at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on. Hindi lang sa pag-ibig, hindi pati na rin sa ating lesson. 
So we have here the pasta spoon or server is used to transfer a little or much cooked pasta to a waiting plate without mess. Pasta spoons are best used with spaghetti style or other long pasta noodles. You can use a large slotted serving spoon for short pasta. So if you want to eat your favorite dessert like spaghetti, or anything that has long pasta noodles, then you can use the pasta spoon server. Next, we have the potato basher used for mashing cooked potatoes, turnips, carrots, or other soft cooked vegetables. So, kailangan ibo boil mo na sila yung mga carrot, yung mga vegetables na ito. Then, use the potato masher to mash them. Alright, at this point of time, we have the rotary egg beater. Used for beating small amount of eggs or butter, the beater should be made up of stainless steel and gear driven for ease in rotating. So, I know they have the same physical appearance of the whisk, but the difference is that, difference is that the whisk is ikaw yung magsishake ng ganun. Para, pa, ikaw yung magro-rotate. But the rotary egg beater, Punti push mo lang sa kanya, magro-rotate na siya ng siya lang. Yun yung pinagkaiba nila. At mas smaller siya kaysa, kaysa sa whisk. Okay? Okay. Alright, so we also have a scraper. A rubber or silicone tools to blend or scrape the food from the bowl. Metal, silicone, or plastic egg turners or Flippers, ito yung pag nagbibake ka ng cake, pag paglalagay ka ng icing, syempre, pag meron kang scraper, sya, yun yung gagamitin yung mag-scrape ng icing, ilalagay mo sa cake. Okay, next we have the seafood serving tools. Make the task of cleaning seafood and removing the shell much easier. For cooking seafood, your seals will vary depending on what you are cooking. So, ito yung mga serving tools na ginagamit sa ating mga seafoods. So, ano ba yung mga seafoods? It's like the crabs, the lobsters, the prawns, the bluefin tunas, or anything. The kuratsa, yan yung mga Sample ng seafood. So, dyan mo sila ilalagay. Gets? Alright. Okay, let's move on. To the serving spoons. A yotin seal consisting of a small shallow bowl and a handle used in preparing serving or eating food. So, pag sa formal, in formality sake, Mo pag magsiserve ka ng food, kailangan talaga may serving spoons. Kasi di naman pwede. Pag magkukuha ka ng pagkain, sarili ng kutsara mo yung gagamitin mo, so dapat talaga merong serving spoons. Kasi kung magkukutsara ka lang, ilalagay mo sa bunganga mo, magkukuha ka na naman. That's very wrong. It's a big no-no. So you have to use a serving spoon. Gets? Any questions? Clarifications? None? Okay, let's proceed. Next, we have the serving tongs. Enables you to more easily grab and transfer larger food items, poultry or meat portions to a serving platter, to a hot skillet or deep fryer or to a plate. It gives you a better grip and the longer the tongs, the better especially when used with a deep fryer, a large stock pot or at the barbecue. So, it, this is what we call serving. As you can see in the picture, these are serving tongs. Pero sa atin, ang tawag natin dito is kumpit. Masang kumpit man. Ako'y kwaon. Kwaon ako ning ako giprito. Magkumpit ko. But in, a, but in a social word, it is called serving tongs. Yes? Alright? Alright. Okay, now we have a soup ladle. It's used for serving soup or stews, but can also be used for gravy, dessert sauces, or other foods. A soup ladle also works well to remove or skim of fat from soups and stews. So, sa ating kasabihan, sa ating word, ang tawag dito ay luwag. Ambing luwag kay magkuha kong sabaw. Yan, it is called a soup ladle. There are many kinds of knives, each with a specialized use. First, we have a butcher knife. 
used to section raw meat, poultry, and fish. It can be used as a clever or separate small joints or to cut bones. Butcher knives are made with heavy blade with a saver or flat grind. So that is... In the picture, that is the butcher knife. Next, we have the French knife. Used to chop, dice, or mince food. Heavy knives have a saber or flat grind. And it is the French knife at the picture. Next, we have the roast beef slicer. Used to slice roast, ham, and thick solid guts of meats. As you can see in the picture, that is called the roast beef slicer. Right, you also have fruit and salad knife. Used to prepare salad, greens, vegetables, and fruits. As you can see, they have variety of colors. You have the orange, pink, green, and the blue. We also have a spatula knife. Used to level up ingredients when measuring and to spread frostings and sandwich fillings. So, it's like you made your flat. The knife. Next, we also have citrus knife. Used to section citrus fruits, the blade has a two-sided serrated edge. So as you can see in the picture, the blade has a two-sided serrated edge. Next is the paring knife. Used to core, peel, and section fruits and vegetables. Blades are short, concave, with hollow ground. We also have the spoons. Solid, slatted, or perforated. Made of stainless steel or plastic, the solid ones are used to spoon liquids over foods and to lift foods, excluding the liquid out of the pot. Alright, we also have temperature scales. Used to measure heat intensity, different thermometers are used for different purposes in food preparation. For meat, candy, or deep fat frying. Other small thermometers are hanged or stand in ovens or refrigerators to check the accuracy of the equipment's thermostat. So, ipapatol siya sa food, nga kakahain lang, then these temperature scales will measure or calculate the temperature of the certain food. Gets? Gets? No more questions? Alright, then we can proceed to our next topic. All right, and we also have tooth and fork. Used to hold meats while slicing and to turn solid pieces of meat while browning or cooking made of stainless steel and with heat-proof handles. So as you can see, the purpose of this fork is to hold the meat. The fork will hold the meat while slicing them. Okay? Okay, let's proceed. Alright, we also have a vegetable peeler. Used to scrape vegetables such as carrots and potatoes and to peel fruits. The best ones are made of stainless steel with sharp double blade that swivels. So, para mas tipid tayo sa ating carrots and potatoes kasi kung kuchili yung gagamitin natin, masyadong makapal yung makukuha na balat. But if you will use this vegetable peeler, then it will lesser or it will lessen the peel of the certain vegetables. Okay. We for blending and mixing. So, ito na. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na pinagkaiba ng rotary egg beater. So, the whisk for blending or mixing used for whipping eggs for ba or butter and for blending gravies, sauces, and soups. The beaters are made of loop steel piano wires which are twisted together to form the handle. So, pinagkaiba kasi rotary egg beater gaya na sinabi ko kanina kung ipupush mo lang yun mag-rotate siya lang kanya but this one, you will be the one to rotate it like this any questions? none? okay, let's proceed next we have the wooden spoons continue to be kitchen essentials because of their usefulness for use for creaming stirring and mixing they should be made of hard wood Okay, gawa ito sa matigas na kahoy. Then, let's proceed to the equipment. More complicated tools are called equipment. They may refer to a small electrical appliance such as a mixer or a large, expensive, power-operated appliance such as range or a refrigerator. Equipment like range, opens, refrigerators, conventional, convection, and microwave are mandatory pieces in the kitchen or in any food establishment. 
So, the first equipment that we're going to discuss is the refrigerators or the freezers. So, do you know what's a refrigerator in Filipino? You don't know? Then I will teach you. Refrigerator in Filipino is called frigider. Okay, so much for that. Let's proceed to its uses. Refrigerators or freezers are necessary in preventing bacterial infections from foods. Most refrigerators have special compartments for meat, fruits, and vegetables to keep the moisture content of each type of food. Butter compartment holds butter separately to prevent food odors from spoiling its flavor. Basically, refrigerator or freezer is an insulated box equipped with refrigeration unit and a control to maintain the proper inside temperature for for food storage. Yan. Para ma-preserve natin yung mga foods natin na hindi pa naman natin kailangan lutuin para mag-long lasting yung lifespan ng mga foods na yun, which we should put them in the refrigerator. Very good! Let's proceed to the auxiliary equipment like griddles, tilting skillets, broilers or grills, steamers, coffee makers, deep fat fryers, wok crockery, cutting equipment, meat slicer, food choppers, grinders, mixers, and bowls, pots and pans are utilized most commonly in big food establishments. Some with specialized uses and some are optional. So, if we can enter to a restaurant, yun sa kitchen nila, the exterior equipment, kompleto sila ng ganon. So, kasi isa sila sa mga big food establishments. Alright. Next, we have the microwave ovens. Pero yung microwave ovens natin ngayon, di nakagaya dyan sa picture. Malalaki na sila, di ba? So, alam ko sa inyo, nakikita na, nakikita na ng microwave ovens. Meron kayo sa bahay niyan or nakikita niyo sa mga movies. Okay, microwave ovens have greatly increased their use in the food industry. Foods can be prepared ahead of time, frozen or refrigerated during the slack periods, and cooked or heated quickly in microwave ovens. Kung nagmamadali ka naman, kasi meron talaga mga foods na di mo kayang iprito kasi nga limited lang yung mga equipment so you can utilize the microwave ovens buksan mo lang ganon pagpapasok mo or it's very useful useful din kapag magbibake ka ng cake pag may oven ka, magbibake ka ng cake it's just easy as 1, 2, 3 alright blenders are used to chop, blend, mix, sweep, puree, grate, and liquefy all kinds of food a blender is a very useful appliance. They vary in the amount of power, like voltage and wattage. Others vary and do not do the same job. So, may pagkakaiba-iba rin yung mga blenders. Basi sa kanilang mga binibigay na butahe at sa watt din. Kasi meron ibang blenders na malakas kumain ng kuryente. Okay, so any questions? Clarifications? None? Since there is none, then let's proceed to our next topic, which is maintain kitchen tools and equipment in working areas. Cleaning and sanitizing. So, aside from the spelling and the pronunciation, do you have any idea what's the difference between cleaning and sanitizing? Then, okay, let's find out. Cleaning and sanitizing procedures must be part of the standard operating procedures that make up your food safety program. Improperly cleaned and sanitized surfaces allow harmful microorganisms to be transferred from one food to other foods. Cleaning is the process of removing food and other types of soil from a surface, such as a dish, glass, or cutting board. Cleaning is done with a cleaning agent that removes food, soil, or other substances. The right cleaning agent must be selected because not all cleaning agents can be caused on food contact surfaces. So, cleaning agents are divided into four categories and these are number one, detergents, number two, solvent cleaners, number three, acid cleaners, and of course, number four, abrasive cleaners. Sanitizing is done using heat radiation or chemicals. Heat and chemicals are commonly used as a method for sanitizing in a restaurant. Radiation rarely is. So, minsan lang yung radiation na ginagamit nila. But, they often do sanitize their 
utensils and equipment. The time the item to be sanitized must be first be washed properly before it can be properly sanitized. Some chemical sanitizers such as chlorine and iodine react with food in soil so will be less effective on a surface that has been properly cleaned. Sanitizing methods. First is heat. Second is the chemicals, concentration, temperature, and contact. Skins are not interchangeable, so check with your chemicals. I know the wrong community. Advantages and disadvantages of different chemicals and things. So we have here the slides. Or the chemicals, concentration, concentration, and the time. Advantages are very understandable. Just understand. Or just see. <laughs> Cleaning and sanitizing utensils. There are three steps in the process to clean and sanitize utensils. First is washing, second is sanitizing, and of course, third is You can see such as washing After washing, the water is not but of course, sanitizing will then kill any that might be So that is our key word, or that is the difference between cleaning and sanitizing. Cleaning here will remove most of the dangerous bacteria, but sanitizing will then kill any that might be Okay, any questions for that? Dry all baking tools and equipment by air drying on a drying rack or wiping with a dry dish cloth. Make sure all wooden spoons and accessories are dry before storing. Next is store all tools and equipment in their designated places. Most frequently used items in conveniently accessible locations. Gather and secure electrical cords to prevent entanglement or snagging. Again, gather secure electrical cords to prevent entanglement and or snagging. Proper storage and handling. Proper storage and handling of clean and sanitary equipment and utensils is very important to prevent contamination prior to use. Clean and sanitized equipment and utensils must be stored and clean surfaces and handled to minimize contamination of wood contact surface. So handled to minimize contamination. Minimize. 
Storage of washed utensils. They should be stored in a clean, dry place, adequately protected against burning and other surfaces of contamination. They should be stored in a clean, dry place, adequately protected against burning and other surfaces of contamination. When not stored in closed cupboards or lockers, utensils and containers shall be covered or inverted whenever practicable. Inverted meaning balibod. Utensils shall be stored in a bottom of shelves of open cabinets below the working shelf level. Rock strikes and shelves shall be made of materials that are imperious, corrosive, resistant, non toxic, smooth, durable, and resistant to shipping. Drawers should be made of the same materials and kept clean. Whole line drawers are not acceptable, but the use of clean and removable towels for lining drawers is acceptable. So proper stacking of glassware, chinaware, and silverware. So this picture shows the proper stacking of glassware, chinaware, and silverware. And the next picture shows the stacking and storing of spices, herbs, and other condiments. So, yan. Sagol ko na sila. Mga condiments. Ano, o, dilis na ikalat-kat sa sabutang. Sagol na sila, mga anak na. Next, storage of bottles and canned food items and other condiments. So, yan, mga bottles. Next storage of equipment, tools, utensils, and other implements. So this picture shows the storage of equipment, tools, utensils, and other implements. Iba? Well organized. Wasa mga kahay dito yung mga mga kahay. Wasa mga utensils, mga tools. And lastly, stocking and storage of China Way. So, kung ang China Way, ilos ka na po ng sila tanan. Para din ka sila magkalan, lakas. Get? Okay, so that's the end of our topic. So, for your questions and queries, you can contact me through my number, 093-4636, and just click the link for the video, HTTP, www.gaiac.com slash e-learning. And that will be all. Thank you. Have a great day, students.